In this video, we're going to learn about similarity transformations and how we can use those to prove similar figures. So first of all, the definition of a similarity transformation. So a similarity transformation is a transformation in which the image has the same shape as the pre-image. So what that means is if it has the same shape, the angle measures are preserved. So the same angle measures will also occur here. So similarity transformations are any kind of transformation where the angle measures stay the same. So what that means is similarity transformations can be our rigid motions, reflections, translations, and rotations, but the new type of transformation that would also create similar figures are dilations. So dilations are going to change the size or the side lengths of the figures, but they will make the angles the same, which means they'll have the same shape and therefore creating similar figures. So this um, theorem down here, two plane figures are similar if and only if one can be obtained from the other by similarity transformations. That's a key idea. That's a key concept similar to what we use with congruence and rigid motions. So basically what that means is if I can take one figure and map it onto another figure using similarity transformations, that means that those figures are similar to each other. It means they're exactly the same shape. So if we look at this example, we want to identify a similarity transform transformation if one exists mapping X onto Y. Um, and if it doesn't, explain why. So I should say identify a similarity transformation or transformations, so a sequence of them. Um, so when I look at this, if I'm starting with X and I want to map it onto Y, the first thing I notice is that X is much larger than Y. So I know that a dilation may have occurred here to um, match these up. But before I start thinking about the dilation, it's easier if we make these two figures so that they're in the same position. So meaning if we try to make the corresponding sides look as if they're parallel, because then it's easier to figure out our dilation. Because if you remember, when you dilate a segment or a line and the center is not on that segment, or line, your new line or segment will be parallel to the original. So when I look at this, these two sides should look parallel before I start thinking about the dilation. Same thing with these other pieces. So the first thing I see is that a reflection occurred. I could see that X was flipped to become Y or vice versa. So the, plate, the point that stays in place is this point right here, this 11 comma 1. So that point is an invariant point because it remains the same. And if I remember, or, or if I imagine um, reflecting over the line that passes through that point, so the line x equals 11, that will start off by getting us x into um, the same position as y. So let's go ahead and actually do that. And I'm going to make a note over here because this one doesn't say um, that we're actually trying to explain why the figures are similar. We're just trying to come up with a similarity transformation. So I'm just going to kind of list them. And it says that we're mapping X onto Y. So that means I'm starting with X and I'm going to Y. So the first thing I'm doing is a reflection over X equals 11. So let's actually do the reflection. So two units. And then this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here's what I'm going to call X prime, kind of that in-between step. And now you can hopefully see how this was helpful because now the corresponding sides are parallel to each other. So that's going to help me find my dilation. So then for the second piece, it's going to be a dilation. It looks as if we're going to be doing a reduction because we went from X prime to Y and it got smaller. So if we look at our point that stays the same, that's that 11 comma 1, that's going to be the center of dilation because it's the invariant point and everything's going to contract towards that point. So if we measure from this point to this point over here, I had to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 1. So let's count to get to the new or the image. I had to go over 1, 2 and a half up 1. 
or up a half. So that means I cut those distances in half. And if you just verify that with another point, so if we go to this point right here, I had to go over 1, 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4. So over 1, up 2 got me the image. So that, again, shows me that I did half those distances, so the scale factor is 1 half. So we, the second step here would be to do a dilation um, centered at 11, 1 using a scale factor of 1 half. And I'm just going to, again, clarify. It did say to map x onto y, onto y so I'm just going to kind of make a note um, to map x onto y. This is what you do, those two steps. Because it is so important to make sure that you specify. Because if you don't, then it's totally different. Because then it would be an enlargement instead of a reduction. So there's the first part. So that's just um, saying to state the similarity transformations that occur. So the next examples, we are going to use the same concept, but now we're going to do the whole write-up. We're going to talk about how to justify. So we want to determine if the figures are similar and explain why. So in order to determine if the figures are similar, you're going to be using that whole notion that if you can find the similarity transformation or sequence of similarity transformations that map one onto the other, then the figures are similar. So you can pick which one you want to start with as long as you specify. So let's say I start with one and I want to go to figure two. The first thing I see is let's do the reflection because I see that we need to get these so that the corresponding parts are parallel. So if I do a reflection over the y-axis, so let me just kind of number these first. So these will be my steps. So we'll do a reflection over the y-axis. So that'll be the first thing. And then I'll write it all up. And then the second thing, once we do a reflection over the y-axis, so that means this is 1, 2, 1, 2, and then A is going to end up here. C prime stays in place. In order to do the dilation, you're going to do a dilation centered at point O, or the origin. So I'm just going to write 0, comma 0. And it looks like the scale factor, so if you count from the origin to um, B prime, which is where you're starting, is two units. And then to get to the final image, to E, it's one, two, three, four. So the distances are doubling, so the scale factor is two. So these right here are the similarity transformations, but now we have to write it up. So let's use that to kind of write it up. So are the figures similar? Yes. Triangle A. B, C is similar, and I'm going to introduce a new symbol that looks like this. It's a tilde. It's the top part of the congruent sign. That represents similar, so let me just make a note here. That's the symbol for similar. Um, so triangle ABC is similar to triangle DE. Uh, I think it's a C there, so we're just going to go with it, D-E-C. Because a reflection over the y-axis followed by a dilation centered at zero, zero using a scale factor of two will map triangle ABC onto triangle DEC, and then we have to say the new sentence, which is to say reflections and dilations are similarity 
transformations. Which preserve angle measures. And remember, only angle measures, nothing about side lengths being congruent, because that's for rigid motions. So that's kind of the write up for showing um, similar figures using similarity transformations. So let's try one more. And if we look at this next example, um, we'll start off kind of the same way. Let's figure out what happened and then we'll talk about writing it up. So I'm going to start with the smaller one and go to the bigger one. I think it's easier to think small to big. It really doesn't make any difference as long as you can get from one to the other. Now the other thing I want to point out, there's more than one way oftentimes to come up with these. Um, so for example, for this next one, you could pick and choose. Um, do you want to try to find the center of dilation? given what you have and um, you can so the center of dilation remember is collinear meaning it's on the same line as the pre-image and image points so what you could do is you could connect the pre-image and image for each um, set of coordinates and then see where those lines intersect and that would be the center of dilation I think in this case it's easier just to take the small triangle, translate it down so that you map M onto R. And then that way you can use that as your center of dilation. So that's what I'm going to do. I think that's the easier way, but not the only way. So my first step is going to be to do a translation. So to map M onto R, I'm going to have to go down, or let me go left to right first. So I have to go 1, 2, 3 to the left, so negative 3. And then I have to go 1, 2, 3 to the left, and then 1, 2, 3 down, so negative 3. And then once you have that, so let me redraw this triangle down here. So I would take and map each point. So this is going to be M prime and L prime is going to be down here as well. And now I focus on getting the dilation. So I'm going to dilate, I'm going to say centered at R, since that point was already there. So I'm going to center at R. And if I enlarge the smaller triangle by 2, because if you look at the distances, they doubled. Um, if I enlarge it with a scale factor of 2, that'll map the small triangle onto the big triangle. So those are my one example of similarity transformations that all work. Now we just have to do the write-up. And you're going to see the write-up is going to be very much the same thing. So I'm going to say yes, um, triangle KML is similar to triangle PRQ because um, a translation... of left three and you just have to be careful because some of these I'm noticing my little slash marks are disappearing so my negatives disappeared on me um, of left three down three and I'm followed by a dilation centered dot R using a scale factor of 2 will map We'll map triangle KML onto triangle PRQ. And then your last sentence is just to say translations and um, dilations are similarly transformations, which preserve angle measures, um, creating those similar figures. So let me just add that last piece in here. So translations 
hand dilations, car similarity, transformations, which preserve angle measures. So there you have it. There's um, another write-up for you. Now, when you're doing these write-ups, you don't have to necessarily describe the dilations and the translations out in words. You can use the symbolic notation up here, which is kind of why I've included both ways. Um, this is kind of like the shortcut to finding it. And then you can choose to use that in your proof or your write-up, or you just explain it, whatever you think is better. Just make sure that if you're using the notations that you're using them properly. Uh, because you don't want to lose points for something like that. So that's the idea. Identify the similarity transformation or sequence of similarity transformations and then just use a similar write-up that we saw before when we did congruence using rigid motions. So go ahead, try your check your understanding problems, and we will talk more about this in class tomorrow.